Good, Good morning, morning, lovely people. How, How are you doing, doing this on this glorious morning? morning? I am Mark J. J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga, and this is your Yoga, yoga Solutions, Solutions Live on this very bright and sunny um, Tuesday, 21st of January, January 20, 20, because, uh, hang on a second, I think I might be getting an echo. That might be better. I hope so, anyway. Yes, I, I'm. Uh, yes, what was I saying? Yeah, I'm. I'm really enjoying doing these um, sensory intelligence series um, because it's it's helping me really hone in on the principles behind my work. I, I have a general sort of um, idea that uh, what what's needed in yoga practice is to not is not to learn what to do to the body. Uh, people have been doing that for. Uh, as long as <laughs> for donkey's years, and it, it doesn't really work. It's um, it becomes uh, an affectation. Um, it becomes a uh, kind of mechanical. And uh, if you develop a mechanical relationship to your body, then the <laughs> it tends to uh, respond in a way that's a bit more mechanical. As in, we we sort of um, yes, we we tend to overtax it, and then it wears out. No, you know, it's 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 just not the best relationship to your body. Whereas, if um, if I can get uh, the the general principle behind my work is to invite people to work directly through the body in relationship to their environment, which is kind of um, both the source of postural issues in the first place, as in people's relationship to their environment to the world about them and how they react to such to external stimulus um, and it's also the solution in that if we can refine the quality of our engagement with our environment then the outcome within our bodies is a more is more harmonious relationships and um, it, it, I mean it uh, it involves investigation it involves total direct presence in that um, you can't just um, blindly engage with things thinking that it's the right way to do things and the outcome uh, I mean if you do it blindly without without self-reference then there's no way of knowing whether <laughs> whether what you're doing is an idea or reality whereas if you're actually doing it if you're engaging through the body with the body um, through direct sensory impressions with your environment, with your touch, with the way you engage with space, etc. Then self-referral, the the stuff that goes on on the inside, the and um, interoceptive sort of understanding of the body, um, is an outcome of what you're doing in space, as opposed to an outcome of what you're trying to do to the body. It makes a, it, it it just changes. It's a game changer, and um, so that's that's pretty much entirely what I'm trying to do when I'm teaching. I'm trying to guide people's attention to a, in an appropriate direction so that they can self-refer um, with a bit more accuracy, a bit more um, clarity about what they're doing. And um, yeah, so anyway, um, that's a bit of an overview. But what, what I was saying was, um, at the moment, uh, I'm on proprioceptive intelligence. Uh, the, my first course was haptic intelligence. And um, what what these online courses are doing for me, they're, they're getting me to really refine and get crystal clear about uh, specific relationships, um, because the mind, you know, likes to know uh, details and specifics, um, uh, which I can get into once I've got people's attention in those directions, and it's quite phenomenal what happens. Anyway, that's where that's where I am at in my own practice. So I thought I'd share some of that really. Um, not sure what sort of situation. Uh, the th the thing I, w I, s I was on on the last um, proprioceptive intelligence call, uh, workshop was um, the skull, the, um, the the skull sitting within the ac um, the atlas, the first vertebra of the neck, and it's um, the only anatomy really I'm, I'm interested in really is bones and joints because um, it it. Um, it illustrates the relationships between parts of ourselves, as opposed to the um, the interpreting sensation of what muscles need to do, which is very confusing. But if you're with bones and joints, um, you, you kind of get a more holistic um, 
picture of what's going on and more accurate because it's around lines of support you see so um yes the skull and the atlas the the, the atlas is this sort of ring like vertebra at the, the first vertebra of the neck and it's um and the skull sits within that and it has um I think it has some sort of processor at the base of the skull that sits neatly inside of the the atlas ring, and the the head itself can kind of move like a like a ball in a cup, as in um, uh, as in the the it sort of slides over the joint it makes with the first vertebra, and it can do so a little bit forwards and back, but more so side to side. And um, that just that simple understanding, that, that straightforward uh, knowledge about um, how the head sits on the spine, gives you an idea of how to release into movement. Because what, what tends to happen is, um, if you're in space, if you're relating to space, if you're awake and wanting to move somewhere, then um, what tends to happen with the head is that wherever you take your weight, the head wants to move away from that point of contact which is the opposite of what most people do in their yoga in that uh, because they go inwards and they're thinking about weight so they they think about heaviness and the result is the head tends to fall towards wherever the weight is so you end up hanging off your spine you know with the idea of stretching whereas this um, understanding of proprioceptive presence to where you are in space as a natural function means that if I take my weight onto, let's say, the front right side of my base, then if my head is involved in space in that way, then it tends to move away from the front right-hand side of the base, and the eyes would follow. You know? um, if, it, if I move into the front left-hand side, then the head tends to move away from that. If I move into the back of the base, then the back of the head tends to move away from that. And it makes for a more kind of whole body um, relationship to earth and space that leaves you with space within the body as opposed to the more um, artificial thing of trying to hang off the body to stretch it which leads to complications as far as i can tell um, anyway uh, that's, a, that's an overview of uh, what i'm on at the moment uh, Oh, what I was on in the last workshop of the proprioceptive intelligence course and uh, if you find that useful uh, then just uh, playing with that possibility of the movement of the skull within the atlas um, gives you a little bit of freedom you know a little bit of freedom for the head to respond to where you are in space in a different way it's not the same as leading with in leading with the head as in you know you decide to go somewhere and then the, the head sort of does the the movement and then that, that's more sort of front weighted that's, that's less of a sort of momentous movement that's less uh, gravity based it's, it's more to do with carrying your weight and organizing it in space in a, in a way that you know follows your intention which is fine uh, but if, we're, if what we're looking for in our yoga is something a bit more natural and confluent and whole then that understanding of um, how the how the head responds to giving weight to the ground gives you an idea of how to meet the space above you. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, let, let's try let's try it in something. Um, I, I've got an idea to try a standing warrior style posture. I think. Yeah. So let's have a go. <sighs> lovely day isn't it this um uh, my studio looks rather nice there yes i'm very very pleased with the whole thing and i've got my blinds in now for a little bit of um shade from the sun when it's too bright or a bit of privacy if i have people in the garden you know so anyway um yes so if we're, we're going to move into um warrior one is it warrior one i, I never know which number it is um but uh, what I'd like you to do is, first of all, if you uh, you know the position, the, the back leg is straightish, the front leg is bentish, <laughs> and um, yeah, the, the 
the problem we have with space is usually that we're we're kind of stuck on the ground with the heels and um uh, heels are not really our feet. They're 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 a point of rest um, that that we've employed as human beings for walking and other things, which is uh, quite an evolutionary step. But we sort of lost our feet in the process, and and what we need is to um, start to feel supported by our feet to begin with, and and as you do that, as you give the weight to the fronts of the feet. Um, there is quite naturally a well, you release the ground in the heels. Um, so you're letting go of the ground on the heels, and along with that, if we can get the inside of the body a little bit involved with releasing away from the ground, uh, we can allow ourselves to um, release up into space through the core of the body. It involves a an expressiveness it involves a, a lightness of being on the inside it involves and you know if you do yoga we call it Uddiyana Banda and other things you know where the inside of the body gathers in and comes up as a result of you um, letting go of the ground underneath the heels is what I'm suggesting and it, and it leads to an extension response um, but it's not the same as leaning back over your heels which is quite uh, quite um, compressive for the spine so it's a movement that is forwards over the fronts of the feet the spine travels with that the whole of the spine travels with that as we let go of the ground on the inside to allow space away from the ground and uh, the head part that's the bit that usually gets in the way for people um, because if you feel a bit unstable what will happen is you will try and pull yourself down um, with the throat and it, it's it's an attempt to get the heels back down on the ground really uh, because it's a response to not feeling stable so that that compensatory thing of tucking the chin in um, as supportive as it feels it's not helping the spine open up so what we need to do is we need to allow the head to go in the same direction that we're um, that, that I was talking about, as in, if the weight goes onto the front of the base, you need to allow the head to rock within its cup in the direct, away from the ground, away from the ground that the weight is arriving on. So you allow the head to just roll on the first vertebra. So it's relaxed, okay? And then with that relaxation up into space, you can just let go of the ground a little bit in the heels and allow, whoops, try and talk to you at the same time, and allow the core of the body to come up with the front of the head. And we're not there yet, we're just allowing space, you see. We're just allowing ourselves to be in space. So it's, it's like you're relating to the space um, in front of you here, but also to the point of support behind your head here, where it's resting back towards. And if you can bring your hands to that point then it becomes uh, it, you can very clearly feel it as a point of support that you can use to breathe from and when you release the breath if you stay where you are in space pretty much but extend the heels back and down away from where your head is extend the front heel as well back and down away from where the head is what you end up in is a relationship between the back of the head and the ground underneath the feet. Well, you get a relationship to space, basically, where you are supported directly from below the head through your feet. And the head sort of remains kind of floating in space. Still that on the other side. So I'll set it up. Um, one foot forwards, not too broad a stance. You know, if you start having to turn the leg out to um, organize yourself in space, then you're, you're going to be holding tight across the base of the spine. Um, it's not illegal to turn the foot out, but uh, doing so kind of tends to make you cheat a bit. Um, uh, yes, there, there are ways of doing it when we don't cheat, but um, uh, 
pretty much parallel if you can and then letting go of the ground in the front of the head so that the head can slide in its cup so we start to have a relationship to space um, away from the ground in the heels and away from the ground in the fronts of the feet. So the fronts of the feet are going down and the head releases away from it. The heels are coming away from the ground and the front of the head is moving with that in space. Okay, And what's happening in the middle is we want the fluid core of the body to release away from the ground along with it. So we get involved with that on some level. It's just a sort of um, an awakening of what, what happens on the inside of these things rather than just leaning back. In fact, you're not leaning back at all. The spine is coming forwards as you come up. If you can breathe where you are, support it from that point that the head is resting back into. When you release the breath uh, from that, that relationship to space, when you release the breath away from you through the heels, an active engagement of touching the ground with the heels not putting your weight down, but touching the ground with the heels with your weight on the fronts of the feet as you release the breath gives you more distance between the back of the head and the heels. And the result is a floating head in a position where you're supported. And the, the whole of the body can sort of rest down away from that. Uh, how's that for time? Got another 10 minutes, so we could uh, have a go at forward bend. Um, let's see. Uh, it's nice just to counter the thing or to feel it in another situation. So same here. Um, when, when people forward bend, they tend to jackknife at the hips and put the weight back on the heels, which means that the spine has to carry your weight. Um, yeah, that was uh, me, me, me and Abigail are doing some um, uh, yoga solutions online courses. Um, and uh, the first subject that we're tackling is the lower back and uh, yeah so, so a little bit of a preview of the one of the workshops on that um, yes when you the, the heels being on the ground tends to be giving of weight and when we are being upright whilst giving our weight to our heels which is meant to be a kind of resting thing Generally speaking, that will cause people to have tension around the spine, the, the, the lower back or the core um, will be overly involved, the core and the hamstrings. Um, you know, the whole tuck under your pelvis um, sh uh, shenanigans. It's just a result of not being supported by your feet. So if, even in forward bend, we kind of want to be able to give the weight to the fronts of the feet, not to your back. Okay, and that's why I'm putting my hands on my thighs. Um, and if the weight is on the feet themselves, which is the fronts of the feet, and that gives you the support you need to breathe, when you release the breath, you can send the heels down away from you, and it tends to lead you lead to a spacious relationship to the earth. Um, in that you're still being supported by your feet, but the touch of the heels, the touch of the heels away from the back of you gives you the length you need to be able to release the spine and feel supported breath by breath now in this one um, some people will be lifting the head some people will be hanging the head if you're deliberately sort of going one way or the other then you'll be slightly confused what we need is a head that rests down through the shoulders through the spine, but for it to do so um, without too much of a pull, we need to allow it to rock and roll inside the first vertebra. And the way you do that is by just looking up inside your head. And the result will be a sort of a neutral hanging of the head, as opposed to a heaviness on the neck or a heaviness on the back. You know, if you, if you overly lift your head, you're holding yourself up with your back. If you overly hang your head, you're pulling on the spine. What we need is a head that is in space equitably. And its weight can be down, but if you look up through your head, then it can roll on the axe on the atlas so that its weight can be transmitted through the axis of the spine to the ground. So that when you put your heels down, your head can feel like 
it's sitting on the heels. Very useful if you're deciding to stand up. Take a breath, you know, a little bit in the front of the feet, and as you release the breath, pull the weight down through the heels, and if the head's on the heels, you'll come up with a very clear sense of um, lightness. It'll feel a bit like you're falling upwards. Okay, uh, that's lots of content um, for a short session. I hope that was useful. Let's see. Um, let's go back to the other camera. Good. So, uh, yes, I enjoyed that. I hope you did. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I really enjoy these sessions. Uh, I, I put them up on... I leave them up on Facebook for a good few days, so Feeny, um, you know, if, you, if you get hold of this before the weekend, it should be okay. Uh, usually by the weekend or latest Monday, I um, take it off Facebook. Um, it, the, the videos go directly onto the Aquaviva website for Silver members, um, so, uh, so that, um, I, I don't know, it's, it's a repository for all of these. And, uh, I think it's such a good resource. It's uh, it's nice to have more organised in in line uh, and in date order with the titles and everything, so you know what you're you're getting into. Excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. <sighs> um, um, yes. So uh, yes, if you want to have permanent access to all of these um, yoga solutions videos, you just go to aquaviva.yoga and you. Go for the membership option of uh, sign up as a silver member. It's just um, four ninety nine a month or something, and that gives you four classes a, uh, a month and uh, lifelong access to all of them. <laughs> uh, yes, and I, I, I yeah, I, I want to make this accessible for free as well. So I do, I leave them up online for a little while um, as time goes on. That that amount of time will reduce, I think, and. Uh, Yes, uh, but uh, do you feel free to spread these around as far and wide as you like, because um, my main mission is to get this stuff out into the world and get people talking about the body in a in a kinder kind of way, in a more useful, practical, practically kind kind of way. And um, yes, I, I think this stuff works. So um, feel free to spread this around. And yes, I'll, I'll be very grateful. Uh, what I've got coming up, well. Uh, not a lot workshop wise at the moment um, I've got let's see yeah so I've got my uh, weekly um, uh, sorry monthly one-to-one -one session in London on February the 5th it's always it's a Wednesday every uh, once a month up up in London Bridge uh, go to a student's house there and she lets me use the space to do one-to-ones I've got three or four spots left on that that's Wednesday the 5th of February 2020 and then um, workshops and the like is mostly my online thing at the moment you can catch up with uh, either the haptic intelligence or the proprioceptive intelligence course uh, online using the recordings um, you can't can't join the live sessions now because it started, um, but you can do that any time. And uh, with my online courses, you get three one-to-one -one sessions over the course to help you. Um, well, to, to to help pass any blocks or misunderstandings, to, to help make things clear for you, whatever you need really, and uh, also can be used for um, you know, emergency care if, you, if there's something going on in your body, you know. So um, yeah, my online course is all always available. Uh, there's other other ones. There's the embodied living ones as well. There, that's a very good course, and uh, that one doesn't come with one to ones. But the haptic intelligence and proprioceptive intelligence can come, both come with three one to ones. And then uh, yeah, I'm having my retreat in March, where I'm um, uh, end of February, early March, where I just go into my own time zone for a little bit. And then uh, let's see, we uh, we have. A workshop in Twickenham on uh, Sunday the 29th that's the next open workshop uh, I title that one I title that one uh, yoga of relationships it's um, yes it's a, it's a lovely group and there, there's uh, there's usually room for one or two 
uh, outsiders to come along and uh, join the group and see if they like it and see what they get out of it. Um, yes, it's a reasonable size venue, so you can always join that one. You have to contact um, Heart Twickenham to get a spot there. It's all on the website. Uh, yes, my uh, February, March. Uh, yes, I, I have my monthly one to one in London Bridge again. In May, I've got a oh, I've got a workshop with the British Wheel in April. Is it April? Um, yes, British Wheel in. Uh, sorry, let me just check. Somerset. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down to Somerset on the 25th of April, doing a, doing a. Uh, CPD, CPD day for the British Whale. I think that was on the um, potentially sutras and the physical practice, something like that. It's around applying principles to practice. And then uh, I think I have another one in May somewhere. Oh no, uh, what I've got in May is I'm doing a weekend, yes I'm doing a weekend away in Cyprus. There's a, there's a lovely um, I've been invited to go and teach a long weekend, Friday to, uh, no, Saturday to Monday, uh, from Saturday 30th of May to uh, Monday the 1st of June, bank holiday weekend, in Cyprus, a, the, a place called Soul Space. And um, yes, uh, I've been invi invited to come along and teach. You, it's a lovely place by all, of, all accounts. I, I've looked at the website, it looks amazing, and they host good events there. So uh, if you if you want to come along to that, then get hold of the Soul Space crew. Uh, you can find them on Facebook. But there's a link to them on, via the Aquaviva website. So that's in May, and yeah, that'll do for now. Okay. Uh, yes. All right, that'll do. Thank you very much. I hope I hope you enjoyed the session. Hope that was useful to you. Uh, do uh, pass it on whilst it's up, and. Uh, Yes, I will see you same time, same place next week uh, for your Yoga Solutions Live. Bye. Lots of love.